Do you guys getting any feedback from me? You're no. listening to the Sarah Fader podcast. This is what anxiety feels like. And I'm here with my homies from Image Intent. We got Brandon, aka Branson. We got Alejandro, Alejandro, Alejandrob. And we have Omar, <laughs> Omi Bear. What's up, guys? What up, dude? You all right? Yeah, chilling like a villain. I'm really psyched that we got cheap Blink 182 tickets. We're going to Austin. Because I fly for free, I'm excited. Nice. That's awesome. That's a, that's an awesome thing. I mean, I I wanted to buy tickets to go see them, but they um they were a little pricey. I'm not gonna lie. But like, you they made to, me you, nervous. You've got to try this app. I mean, it was a miracle. Yeah. Seventy nine dollars a ticket. Also, I'm at my dad's house, and I was going through old books, and I I found this, <laughs> which wow. is crazy. I know. Look how, look how young they were. I know. Good and somebody, Lord. someone got this for me for my birthday in college. Very oh, well, Can Who you hold that? that up again? Yeah. What? Oh, that's, uh, this is Ape. that's our new, uh, that's Ape. Dude, the fuck, the Travis, uh, was it Barker? Yeah. He's, he's got hair. I know. He has like dreads. At one point? Yeah, he had a mohawk. That's amazing. I know. I, this, and actually, you know, I must, I must tell you that this book is very entertaining and um, it reminds me of, I don't know if you guys had standardized reading tests when you were in elementary school, but we had these tests that would tell us like how good you were at reading. And then some of them would be like, you can read magazines or you can read newspapers. And I feel like I've always been on the magazine train and I feel like this is the level of like, I don't know, fourth grade material, but it's fun. <laughs> that's a, that's hilarious. Brandon. Shampoo bottles. I shampoo used to read bottles. Of shampoo bottles. Yeah. Cereal boxes. Bro. Well, I'm so old that I can't even read the back of shampoo bottles. I have to take a picture with my fucking iPhone and then zoom in to see the ingredients. <laughs> I'm old, you guys. Old AF. I mean, we're all there. Yeah, we're right. getting there. We're getting there. I still can't read. You can't. It's difficult. Also, I was talking to Brandon. You guys have to watch. The new season of Black Mirror, the first episode with Andy Murphy will make you never want to watch Netflix again. It's absolutely horrifying. Is it out? Oh, it's out. Oh. I thought it was you were gonna say it was absolutely horrible. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> no, it is not horrible. It is, it is very it's scary. You know how Black Mirror is. It's creepy. Like you feel yeah. like this could actually happen. Why'd you gotta be black? That's I know the name right? of the show. Wait, is it is Eddie Murphy playing his character as Donkey on the show? Not no, no, Eddie, Eddie Murphy. Murphy, like from Shit's Creek. It's Annie, Annie Murphy. Annie Murphy? Uh, yes. I heard Eddie Murphy. Also. I heard Eddie Murphy. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to actually request that Eddie Murphy, if you're listening to this, because you must be listening to my podcast, you should be on Black Mirror. And you should also do Coming to America 3. Oh, yes. Where I've can I enough. get a queen in Queens? Before that, can you please get Golden Child Part 2? Mm. Oh, Allegedly. Child. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we are here oh, to God. talk about heartache. Oh, yeah, yeah. Heartache. This is supposed to be a heartful one. Sorry. Hi, Brandon. How are you? Good. How are you guys doing? You got you got someone there with you. I do. Alejandro. Where, I want to see the puppy again. Where's this the puppy? Is, uh... Our buddy Ryan. Ryan. He just flew in from Alaska. He uh came in uh with uh how'd you get here? You said you took a train and a boat. Yeah. And I sent a carrier pigeon to get picked up at the airport. Oh, That's yes. incredible. I hear Alaska's very warm, so I'm excited to go check it out. Yes. Oh, and the last time I talked to you guys, I didn't have a job, and now I have a job. I'm so excited. Congratulations. Thank you so much. You got this. I believe in you. You're the future. Thank you. Oh, don't forget, you're missing someone here. Oh, who are we missing? Oh, yeah, we got Apex back here. Oh, oh, wait, his name is Apex? Yeah. That is fantastic. You need to get another dog and name it Penultimate. Hmm. Penultimate? <laughs> I discovered that the way to win arguments with customer service people mm -hmm. is to start using SAT words. <laughs> And then they're like, um, um, I guess you're right. It's so crazy because <laughs> right now smart, so <laughs> I mean, that's not always necessarily true because 
you need to try to get in an argument with Jake. Have you talked to Jake yet, our drummer? Yeah, I think he was there with you guys the last time. You should definitely try to get in an argument with him. I would like, like, it's, oh, it's, uh, it's, how do I say this? From SAT and he goes into full Shakespeare mode. Yeah, he's, he just, I don't think he's right, but I don't understand what he's saying half the time. He talks in riddles. So I just assume he's getting a point. Mm -hmm. You know, because when you're arguing, it's kind of like a, you get a point, I get a point, depending on who's winning the fight. I'm right. pretty sure he's just talking gibberish, but for some reason, I feel like I'm getting my ass kicked the whole time. Yeah, that sounds intimidating, but now I feel like I'm <laughs> up for a challenge. Now you've challenged me, so I have to rise to the occasion. Oh, yo, that's that's pretty good. Actually, this is really good. I believe. Oh, sorry. We're, uh, what are we talking about? We're uh, talking about. Stuff. Yes, we're talking about sad things, but now I want to know what you just said ew to and then was like, OK, it's fine. I'm confused. Oh, hard seltzer. Tonic is selling hard seltzer. <laughs> they are here. Sorry, I don't know why I said that so aggressive. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, have to, I, have, in Utah. <laughs> I have to bust on you now. That is such a white girl drink. That is like the most, that's the ultimate white girl drink right there. Trying to get into character for the Barbie movie. Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about heartache. What is the genesis of this song? What inspired it? Go ahead, Brandon. So um, I started working on like the bare bones of this one before I met all the other guys. Um, and I actually started writing it just right after we got my son home from the hospital. Um, he had sent, he'd spent a few days in the, the NICU. Um, he basically got taken away from us as soon as he was born because he couldn't keep his blood sugar up. And so we spent three days in the, the ICU. We didn't really get to see him that much. It was just a really, really hard time. Um, and so we got home, we got him home, and I just felt like writing. And so I, what came out was the startings of heartache. And then what's really cool about the way that we've kind of been writing songs since the beginning is that I can tell Omar a story about kind of like, hey, this is this is why I kind of started putting these pieces together. Um, and then he translates that into, you know, lyrics and melodies. So that's that's kind of the basis of how the song started. Um, I'm sure Omar's got some other feelings and attachments to it, but yeah, that's that's kind of how it started for on my point. That's interesting because when I talked to Homer, he had the same sentiment where he when he was talking about his journey with PTSD, he said that you were Omar, you were able to translate that for him. So I feel mm -hmm. like maybe that is a role you have. I. I, I think I do really well with being able to capture, I guess it, you would say, like just somebody's feelings. Like if you describe to me how you're feeling and I can find a way to put myself in your eyes or as close as I can or try to relate to you, technically that's that's uh, that's kind of how these songs have been going. So like uh, Brennan was feeling a certain way. He's feeling, uh, I think it was just a sense of loss. He gave me a sense of loss when he was describing everything or a sense of like, you know, the, the idea of losing somebody or the idea of, of being scared that someone was going to no longer, you know, exist. And um, during the time, at the same time, I was losing someone that I, I knew is no longer with us. So I was like, how can I make a song that everyone can kind of relate to? Because, you know, you, it's it's the whole song essentially is, is about losing somebody that you don't want to lose, that you really love. But it's it's a it's a it's a grieving song. So I used all of it put it into one and try to make it as uh as open-minded as i could like it's not i'm not saying anybody's specific name i'm not saying any too many details but i am trying to show people like the emotions of of what that feels like if that makes sense it does i i felt that very heavy grief feeling and i think it's a relatable song it got me thinking about my mom actually because i lost my mom during covid not not to COVID, it was to gastric cancer, but there is a line in that in heartache that really got to me. And I'm trying to remember exactly what it was, but so the sentiment of like the person not coming back, right? Like wanting them, mm -hmm. wanting them to, to come back, but I'm but or almost begging them to come back, but they're not, it's not possible to come back. Yeah. Well that's that's one of the you know what as as human beings, that's one of the the hardest things I think anyone 
has to go through and everyone will eventually have to go through in one way or another, whether it be a friend, a family member, a parent, you know, everyone at some point, even a, even a dog, you know, whatever it is, at some point, everyone is going to lose something that they really love and it's going to affect them. And I think that's that's kind of this song was kind of written in in, in a very open sense of everyone can hear it and kind of you know, make up your own emotions towards it of what it means to you. So yeah, it's like it could, to you. It could be, it could be a death. It could be a breakup. It could be mm-hmm. many different things, but mm-hmm. it's loss in some profound way. I think that the line was something to do with, I thought I was going to be the one that left first or something like that. I can't remember exactly mm-hmm. what it was, but. I believe but- it's, it's in the chorus. I think I, I think I go something along the lines of like a, is it is it selfish to believe that I should be the first to leave? That's it. That's mm-hmm. that's the one that really hit me mm-hmm. because I remember not to get like too deep, but I remember when my mom died, I said, this is so dark, but I said, I don't want to live in a world where my mom is not existing. Like, I don't I don't want to live in a world where my mom isn't. Because yeah. that's how connected I was to her, which I mean, you know, it's your mom, right? But I, that's how I, that line got to me because of that feeling. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's a reality. Like I said, it's a reality. It's just, it's just being a human being. We're all gonna, we're all gonna go through it in one way or another where we're gonna, we're gonna lose somebody that we don't wanna lose. But it's just, it's part of growing up and everyone goes, I can, I'm sure everyone has different circumstances of what they feel during the time. But for the most part, it's generally a heartache, which is why the song kind of works out that way. It's like everyone goes through grieving or everyone's going to feel those emotions at some point. And that that line specifically, I remember I wrote it in there and um, because I've always made I've, you know, being younger, I've always made dumb jokes where I've always said like, oh, I'd rather be the first to go so I don't have to see anyone I love leave. Like Mm -hmm. that's always been my 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 dumb mentality of it. But. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not it's kind of not how things work out. I mean, you know, I me personally, I'm I'm watching my parents get older. I'm watching everybody get older around me. And I know eventually it's it's going to happen. And it's I know. You know I well, I, I have a very morbid sense of humor. So I'm wearing a black dress today. And my daughter was like, you look like you're going to a funeral. And I was like, maybe <laughs> it's my own. <laughs> but like, very creepily, yeah. you know, well, like, you never know. I could be a yeah. zombie. Well, if it makes you feel better, I'm also wearing all black, but that's just because when you open up my closet, it looks like an old 90s cartoons where it's the same outfit 30 times. And oh, it's I know. nothing but black shirts. I have the same thing. Well, the problem is, and I don't necessarily think it's a problem, but when I find something that I like, I buy like 500 of them because I don't know if they're going to stop making it. And it's that could be clothes. It could be some kind of food, whatever it is. I'm like, I must stock up for the apocalypse in case I need this. Black yeah, that's shirt. why that's actually why I uh, I use the same pair of underwear like all the time. And I've had the same pair of underwear for about six years now. Basically just a waistband. It the is exact, just the exact one, just one of them. It just, just one. It is, it, ha- it holds a lot of sentimental value. I've been yes. through a lot of things. I with that one pair of underwear. I get it. Well, yeah, no, but but actually, that is one of the things. I found a very comfortable pair of underwear, and I have like five thousand of them, and I'm fine with that. Oh, I just have one. Oh, I know. <laughs> I I understand. You only have one pair, <laughs> just that one. But you know what? That's all. That's all you need. Just one pair. But we can relate. You know, and then, you know, going back to the whole heartache thing, you know, I can I've I've experienced loss multiple times uh, through a lot of family members that are have passed away. So when he, when it comes to, you know, giving a, a meaning to that song, you know, personal meaning, I tend to go and drift that direction because, yeah, you know, death and people that are the closest to you is kind of shitty. <laughs> it is and I well I also feel when I listen to it that it goes through the stages of grief if you oh, think yeah. about the the structure of the song it it absolutely goes through um now I have to remember the stages of grief I guess denial that's one wait denial anger bargaining depression acceptance 
I yeah. can't I fucking remember them all. That's I mean, pretty damn good. Pretty good. Yeah. I think like for me, because I remember when I when I started writing like the different guitar parts and stuff, um I I think it, somebody had mentioned that like the second chorus like guitars don't like may not really fit the energy and stuff. And it's like, well, I mean it that's kind of how the whole experience was for me was, you know, one minute I'm just right down in these lows and the next minute it's like oh there's this hope or there's this like anger and it was just a, a really crazy experience and I think that the song really reflects that and Omar really helped kind of like guide the structure on that and really kind of tighten it up so that it it worked really well I think and um so yeah he did a really good job on on helping bring that together now oh, I'm gonna thanks, have to listen to it I'm yeah yeah sorry I didn't interrupt I was gonna say I'm going to have to listen to it again and then identify which is what phase. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Well, it's like you know, I with all this, with all the songs, if it, if you really boil it down, each song that we've released kind of has its own. Um, I want to say kind of like its own unique uh, topic. Like, and I and I like I said, I always try to leave things very open, to where you can you can take whatever I say, uh, and make your own interpretation of what it actually means. But like, you know, just like Living in Santa, Living in Santa is very clearly a PTSD song. Right. Um, if you asked me, like, well, what is it actually about? I'd say it's it's me putting myself in Homer's shoes and seeing what he's going through and trying to put myself in through his eyes through PTSD and see how I would handle the situation or what I would be feeling. But any form of PTSD or any form of anything that you're feeling, that song can it's pretty open minded if you're just going through anything. You can hear the song and and you can relate to it. Same with heartache is about just death and grief. Um, Ryan Gosselin is about feeling like you were on one path and it turns out that you ended up in a whole different path and that's okay. It's accepting that it's okay that yeah, you're not where you wanted to be. Like each each song has its own unique topics that I like to do to where it's very open and everyone can relate. But at, at the end of the day, it's always still going to be our therapy. Like each song, I can tell you exactly what I was going through at exactly the time that it was written at exact. Like I can tell you details, but I'd prefer you hear the song. And you're like, well, this song made me feel this and it made me relate to this. It's like, good. I want you to, you know, to feel what you're feeling. And then we sync up and then we can we have a connection in that way, if that makes sense a little bit. It does make sense. I, I, that's why I prefer not to look up the meaning of songs, like what the artist was thinking when they wrote it, because I would rather have a personal connection to it. So I, I like that idea. I actually wanted to hear, Brandon, so the story about your son being in the NICU, is there any particular part of heartache that connects to that experience? Like any particular line? Um, I think the the biggest part for me is the bridge where there's kind of a back and forth with the vocals and there's like a underlying second part with it says, you know, just make it home, make it home. You're going to make it. Oh, God, I'm going to get emotional. That kid's too fucking cute. Like, <laughs> I'm going soft. Talking about Einer? Yeah. Um, that kid so is like, so adorable. You should see the cheeks on that little sucker. He's got his dad's cheeks, actually, but bigger. It's adorable. Yeah little fat cheeks um and so that that part of that song even just still listening to it if i'm by myself or i'm just like you know getting too into it it just it still like hurts because <laughs> it was just it was a scary process um not really knowing what was going to happen because he he spent like the first i want to say like 36 hours just every time they would try and take him off of the um getting the they would feed him this stuff to keep his like blood sugar up and um he just wouldn't be able to regulate it so it was it was pretty terrifying um and then we when we brought him home he had to be on like the the uv lights for like a week and it was just a, a big process so that whole thing about like no is you're that, gonna make it, are, you're gonna make that, it home oh sorry i was just gonna ask the uv lights for jaundice yeah okay yeah, so. sorry you're gonna make it home mm-hmm yeah, so that that part is the really big part for me, um, and then also the second vor uh, verse that I sing over Omar's screaming parts. Um, that was that was really therapeutic for me to be able to do that, and still is, because um, I think that explains exactly what I was going through in the hospital. Was just you know, I I was angry and scared, and like I just couldn't stop imagining him like you know, what are we going to do? Like if he doesn't make it. And so, yeah, it's, 
it's kind of got a lot of that in there. But again, like that's, I feel like it's still my interpretation of it. And it can be for like Omar just does a really good job of making it so that anybody can attach to it, whatever they've, they've been going through. Yeah. Now that I know that that is, that's how it started. I, it makes me feel even more connected to it. My son, when he was born, he was born four weeks early and he was in the NICU for three days. So I, I definitely feel that on a very visceral level although i didn't have the experience where you, you, you know the dire experience of having to regulate his blood sugar but it is scary when you yeah. have a baby and they're in the nicu you don't know what's going to happen there's this uncertainty so i cannot even imagine how scary it was for you yeah and like nobody tells you anything like yep. you know they're just like we're gonna wait like we're just gonna keep trying like we we don't know and so it's that's not helpful at all and you know that they have like certain amounts of time that you can be down there and so I just remember one night like we were trying to sleep and Kira was just my wife was just bawling because she didn't get it like hold him that much that day and I just was like you know we're gonna walk down there we're gonna make him like just let us go sit in there with him and yeah it was it was crazy that's heartbreaking yeah yeah but well, he's I'm doing good he's he's I was gonna say I'm glad very he's doing large right now chunky and he's he's at it all the time <laughs> how old very is he high now? energy um, so he's 19 months now. So he's, he's almost two. You're out of woods. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I like that. Omar, you should rename yourself the empathy monster or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> just write a new one. Yeah. Just write a new one. Yeah. <laughs> write spoiler another alert. one. Yeah. Spoiler alert. It's the next one. The next one, hopefully it'll be done. I don't know. Hopefully here in a, a month or two or whenever it comes out. Uh, that one is, I had a friend who was going through something, uh, it's very similar to, to the Homer song living in sanity PTSD, but she was, uh, she kept, she kept going through something where her depression was taking the better hand, like it was, it ended up kind of winning throughout. And, um, I, I just kept remembering kind of how, how she was handling things and how she, she felt like no one could help her and, it's not worth helping and then it just it, she ended up going in a really dark place and doing really bad things and luckily she's doing a lot better now but even even that one is, is like when you listen to the song even though the main the main portion of the song is ideally going through depression and going through a hard time and overcoming that and feeling hopeless which is how hopefully anyone is going to be able to interpret the song the song itself is actually written in in her perspective and how I, what I saw her going through and what I saw, you know, her struggle was. And I don't know, maybe that has something to do with the fact that as much as I, my, my bandmates love telling me that I, I, I love making things about me all the time out of a, you know, I'm sure they mean it out of the goodness of their heart, Mr. Brandon. No, they don't <laughs> apparently, but I, per, I, prefer I, I don't to, remember uh, ever, ever saying those words out loud to you. <laughs> you, you said them in your you said them in your mind i could see it in your ass <laughs> also that's not a bad lyric i might use that later but for the most part i like i like telling stories i like telling stories of what i see i like making connections i like people so that's that's kind of i don't know that's the sobby side of all of this but for the most part it's pretty fun it's therapeutic and i hope this song helps somebody grieving definitely for sure yeah i don't know about people sometimes they're overrated in my opinion but uh that animals too. all the way cats all the way for me i was gonna say depression is very tricky because it feels it's hard to explain i feel to people that have not been through it but it's like walking around with with invisible weights on your body and not being able to articulate that and i think and the other analogy that i always use for depression is you're like wrapped in a dirty blanket and you know, the blanket's dirty and you know, you need to wash it, but it's comfortable. And I feel like that's the thing is people feel comfort. They, they feel comforted in their sadness. Somehow it feels familiar. And so it's so hard to break that. But I, I think it's really good that you're able to tell that story because, you know, it, when people do self-sabotage behavior or they or self-injurious behavior it's not because they want to necessarily it's because they're trying so hard to survive yeah exactly and, and it's like i said like eventually once the song is out i'll send it to you, you can kind of and i'll send you lyrics you can kind of see what it's all about 
but like there's a like there's a specific lyric in in a I think it's the first or second chorus where I say I sing the lines of um it says I can't keep living like this anymore. I found her lying on the bathroom floor, and then I think it it sings back uh, leaving her heart for the world to read, mm. and that lyric even though it's you know it's it's just kind of like a poetic theatrical way of saying that that's i mean there is some truth to that i remember you know going in and seeing my friend and she had just decided she wanted to you know try to drink a bunch and do a bunch of bad things and and that that was one of the last things that she the like the mess the one of the last messages she sent me is i can't keep living like this anymore so i went over to her place Mm -hmm. And I actually did find her laying on the bathroom floor. And I was like, what the hell is that? So I just, luckily, like I said, she's doing great now and everything is fine. So I can talk about it. But the fact that I was able to, you know, I'm able to do that and put that in the song and like sing it and make it pretty. Hopefully someone else, you know, they'll, they'll hear that and they'll get their own interpretation. Maybe they, maybe their significant other or person didn't, didn't make it or, you know what I mean? Yeah. But Hopefully it brings awareness. Depression is a real thing. It is very yeah. real. I will say, though, as far as the bathroom floor goes, I really like to lay on it sometimes because it's, it's so nice. It's so nice. And it's so cold <laughs> and comforting. And I feel my... like. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, it's no, it's my it's definitely my safe. It used to be my safe place. Let me clarify back in my uh, my younger, more party party ish days. That was my safe place. If you if you didn't see me, if I wasn't in the party, go check the bathroom. I'm probably on the on the bathroom floor just Listen, laying there. Man, those hey, you guys are... gotta stop saying bathroom floor because all I can think about is the fucking Shaggy song. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. No, that was me. That was me. That was you and your one pair of underwear. Okay. Uh, I, Omar needs to go to the bathroom floor now. No, just kidding. I know. That's it. You're going to the bathroom floor. And, you know, speaking of that song that he was just talking about, um, if you were at our show last time at, in Utah, then you would have heard it. Not you, Sarah, necessarily. Oh. You were there. You were there. But I'm saying for those that, you know, that are l watching or listening, mm -hmm. um, that that song was part of the, the set list for that. So you probably can remember if you were paying attention. That's good. I am excited to hear it and read the lyrics. Very, very yeah. cool. Well, yes. yeah. and we do have we have another com show coming up here next month in July 15th here in Las Vegas. Very so, cool. So for those of you that are watching and are interested in being there, then you can hear that song again. Yeah, so tell I mean, us you did, you did say you fly for free, so I'm, I'm just leave expecting it, to see you there. Leave it, leave it up to Alejandro <laughs> to turn anything into a, a, a plugging the, the tour dates or plugging the show. It's like, and also, if you're watching and you're a record label or a music <laughs> producer and you, yes. you want us to go all over the place, then, you know, hit us up. Imogen 10. Okay. Yes, exactly. Ticketmaster, if you are watching or listening, please sponsor my podcast. I like I money. Um, I love that transaction, <laughs> Alejandro. He, Alejandro is the best at that. He'll he'll be saying, yeah, so that's why that song is so sad and it's about grief. And you can hear it live for the low price. <laughs> for the low, low price. <laughs> oh, sure, you, know, you got to be there for the experiences. Like if you're an alcoholic, you have to go to Vegas, right? Oh, God. I, I, you know what? I, I'm traumatized because the last time I went to Vegas, I lost so much money. Like I, that is the last fucking place I need to go. That, that's gambling. <laughs> so I guess that's another reason to be in Vegas, but yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. No, <laughs> absolutely fucking not. But tell us about where this show is, where we can get tickets, all of that information. Alejandro, the publicist. Beautiful. Well, thank you for uh, allowing me this uh, opportunity. <laughs> First, I want to thank my sponsors, Omar for believing in me. Um, no, this show will take place. Uh, it's called the Eagle Airy Hall in uh, Henderson, Nevada, which is an adjacent city to Las Vegas. So you do have to fly to Vegas if you want to come see it from a different city or drive in. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, we're going to be playing with a bunch of like cool bands, one of them from, from Reno, a bunch of other local bands. Um, we'll leave that as a surprise so you can check it out in our Instagram at Image Intent. Uh, it is $11. 
pre-sale $15 on the day of the show. So it's pretty affordable for a total of seven bands in the lineup. So you're getting your money's worth. It's like a mini festival. It's dope. Nice. And um, yeah, we have we have some surprises for everybody that's going to be attending. Um, auditory surprises and physical surprises, if you may. So I don't want to give out too many details. So yeah, just be there, you know, check it out. You there can buy tickets directly from us. Yes. Uh, we have physical copy for sale. Or if you want to purchase online, just uh, check the link in our bio. I feel like I like a, what is it, like an influencer? But yeah, the link in our bio is going to have You're a You're doing a great job. I have, I have to say, this is very mm -hmm. professional. Thank you. I'm not too sure, but I think Brandon had mentioned that he was giving out some free kind of stuff. I think I don't know if he was gonna keep doing that. Didn't Brandon? Weren't you I, saying you were giving yeah. out guitars or some free stuff? Yeah, yeah like free I've guitar. got like hundreds of guitar picks that have our band logo on them that oh, I'm guitar giving guitar picks. Free. That's what it was. Picks. Yeah. Oh, that's underwhelming. Right. And, and high fives. <laughs> and high fives. I love it. Right well, you. no, Alejandro did say that <laughs> for multiple sensory gifts, right? It was well, like auditory gifts. Yeah, it's a lot of Omar yes. moaning. <laughs> Hey, and uh, speaking of guitar picks, uh, yeah. big shout out to uh, Black Arbor for uh, endorsing Image and Tent. I got, a, I got a picture. I don't think you you know. Do you put these videos out? Yes. Like, so there's the Black Harbor logo. They uh they actually uh, sponsor us as guitarists. And then there's the band logo on the other side. So nice. They're pink. They're cool. I've got a bunch of them. Well, I'm sure that my my child would love to see you guys again in Vegas. But now I have a job. Oh, that's okay. There's always gonna yeah. be a time. We're gonna be in New York soon, right? Yes, we have to hook it up. Exactly. You know where to find yeah. us. We know where to find you. That sounds creepy. I know. You know, you know what? No, <laughs> you have to be creepy sometimes. Okay, that's how we. That's how we live. That's okay. Thank I like you being so creepy much. sometimes. Yeah. yeah, creepiness is good. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course. And, yeah, and tell us where we can find Image Intent online and all that good stuff. Just You're on Instagram. Google Image TikTok. Intent. Yeah, we, we are. Alondre, right. don't let us down. You have. I, to I got it. I got okay. It. Are, uh, <laughs> go ahead. Type, type in uh, image slash intent on Spotify. We are on Instagram. We are on YouTube. We are on Apple Music, Pandora. We are. Um, we're Seem on to be only, only fans. fans. Only fans. Um, if you go, if you go on our Instagram, I believe Brandon is uh gifting away his beautiful guitar that's right there on the screen. On the right hand, is that not? No? Wow. Okay, so someone definitely fed me. Uh, I apologize. I got misinformation. Um, that is the only one of those on the planet is never leaving my. my there we go. Oh, this there. dog is my. I love this dog so much. Isn't he so cute? I just want to so put cute. him in a big. Alejandro, tortilla. get a little, get a little baby Bjorn and oh. just. Yes, him on stage. please. He needs Some more to eat him. <laughs> Oh, the baby carrier. Yeah. Cute. Put him in, uh, in my my uh, leather my leather jacket. I used to put him in the jacket and zip it up, and his head would be just poking out. <laughs> Adorable. <laughs> I love animals so much. And animals have, uh, are so much I have better photo than people. Proof of that. So if you don't believe me, I have photo proof. Okay, I don't it, believe you. I, I, you know what? I I don't <laughs> believe you, and I'm saying that only because I want to see the picture. Oh, sounds like a dare. Oh yeah, it's a dare. <laughs> dare me, dare me once, shame on me. <laughs> Let me find it. I don't even know what that means. You guys remember? You guys remember Dare, like the Dare program? Of course. I wonder Drugs if that was really exciting. I think that's what that stood for, right? Yeah. It was uh, now I don't remember the what the acronym is. Drugs are really exciting. Drugs are I really exciting. <laughs> I don't. I don't ever remember the, what it actually stood for. That's all. It's just drugs are really exciting. Drugs are really exciting. <laughs> I remember mothers against drunk driving. Mad. He said uh, Ryan over here on my left. He said drugs awareness resistance education. Resistance. That's powerful. Mm. Resist drugs. Punk rock. Very punk rock. Resist. Don't do drugs. <laughs> yes, kids, do not do drugs. I don't. I don't. Uh... Or what, what, what does Bring Me the Horizon say? Bring Me the Horizon has the best line on their live show. What they do is, hey, Bring Me the Horizon does not, uh, we don't we don't like drugs. 
at our shows. So go ahead, please take them now before the show starts. That's <laughs> for that because I was there last year. Oh God. I took the drugs. You better but be sending I... me that picture and a and a DM and Instagram. You better be doing it right now. I'm looking for it. I'm gonna show it to you to prove you that I'm okay. Gonna... Right. Well while we wait here, um let's see, what did we what did we all cover the topics? The heartache was the griefing song. Brandon's auctioning off his guitar. You guys um, have an show. OnlyFans suddenly. We have an OnlyFans. It's uh, it's called uh Only Fedoras. It's uh oh. Only Fedoras slash Omi Intent. Mm -hmm. And it's pictures mm -hmm. of me just in a fedora. That's it. Just a fedora. I like to keep the crowd happy. You have you to know, do it's all about Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, you know, we're in, we're in the future now. It's not just free the nip. It's free the bulge. So we're all. <laughs> oh, my God. You were not kidding. <laughs> Look at his face, dude. No. He looks, are you Italian? Look at his fucking face. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> well, you, that's my dog. What are you that's doing? Huh? My dog. Hey. 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 It's my dog hey. over here. Just pick a fork in me. You pull me my in the other room. Over here. My dog. <laughs> All right. Any pretend, uh, pretend facial hair. Well, we need to include all the details about the show in the notes so everybody can come see you guys. And thank you yeah. so much again. Yeah, yeah of course. Really I'm sorry fun. I was late. Oh, I well, apologize. You should, be, you should be very sorry. I'm. I apologize. I am very sorry. Sorry, Brandon. Uh, our fearless leader over there. Look at him. Uh, he's. I'm, we all. We all. We all look up to Brandon because Brandon does things like auctioning true. off his fucking thousand dollar <laughs> guitar, just just to fans, just to be like, hey, this is how much we love you. One mm -hmm. of you is getting this bad boy, maybe, for free. Maybe once we get a gold record, <laughs> I'll, I'll auction it off. But that is at mean. at zero cost. All you have to do <laughs> is message Brandon Shea. On Instagram, send him a message. Let him know, hey, you're interested in the guitar, and he'll he'll be sure to hit you. <laughs> yeah. But remember, we don't need a gold record. There's enough whole gold hardware in the guitar you're auctioning. It is it is very gold. <laughs> really, we don't need a gold record. And Just for, hit him up. And for one lucky fan, he will also consider giving up his gauges. His little dangly gauges. Whoa. One lucky fan. Oh, little dangly boys. <laughs> one lucky fan is gonna get his ears. One lucky fan is gonna get that guitar right there, fully free. He'll pay for shipping. He'll make <laughs> sure he gets it. No shipping on him. 